Would you please pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Did you ever get into one of these conversations with somebody and you feel like both of you are sort of having a different conversation, but you're both talking to each other? Like you just can't seem to get on track. The other person's saying one thing and you just can't like wrap your head around the thing they're saying and you respond back and you're not really sure if they're even hearing anything you are saying to them. I have a pastor friend. This is my experience with him. He talks and by the time the conversation is over, I'm absolutely exhausted and not really sure what just happened. I think that's what happens between Pilate and Jesus in the gospel today. The two of them cannot hear each other. And I imagine both of them, or maybe not Jesus, sometimes I think he does it on purpose, but Pilate just gets increasingly more frustrated. Christ the King Sunday today. I love this Sunday. I love this Sunday. I love the theme of this Sunday. Um, And I love that this theme, Christ is King, always comes up around Thanksgiving. It's even better when it comes up the week before Thanksgiving like it has today. And this other event that happens after Thanksgiving that we also need to remember, Christ is King. This theme kind of hits me in the gut every year. Um, that Christ is king, or at least supposed to be king, in our lives, individually, and as a church community. And so, there's a lot to say about that. First of all, the whole idea of Christ being king is pretty easy to understand. It's not complicated. When we get to this Sunday, we're not like, what does that day mean? It's not like Monday, Thursday, where we're like, what is Mo-? every year, my kids are like, what does Monday mean? Or, let's not even get into the transfiguration Transfiguration Sunday. This is not a tough day to wrap our heads around. Christ is king. Duh. God shows up. God is a little baby, and even when he's a little baby, people come and bring him gifts, and he's king. And then God continues to show up being king. And God's kingdom didn't look like what anybody thought it should or would. And so I find this day kind of refreshing. It's kind of bring us back to home Sunday, recenter us Sunday. Um, ironically it's on the last Sunday of the church year the church year begins at Advent and next week is Advent Um, rather than starting off with Christ as King we finish with Christ being King and we've been over the last year the year of the lectionary walks the whole story of Jesus four weeks of anticipating his birth then he's born and then he's born actually in a really crappy location a stinky barn um Then we hear the stories of Jesus and his radical life of questioning the social norms of the day, the status quos, um, infuriating so many people that he gets the religious leaders all angry with him. They crucify him. And then at the end of that, he's astonishingly resurrected. And then he encourages everybody after he's resurrected to do the same thing, to follow this new way of life, breaking all the expectations of the world, creating more disciples to do the work, And then we get here to the last Sunday of the church year, and Christ is king. It's so simple. Jesus is Lord. And yet, it is so hard for us. We yearn, I think, to to have Christ be king in our lives and in our world. Our heart aches for God's kingdom to come as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, right here, right now. But yet, it is so hard for it to happen in our lives. Like this Thursday, already alluded to a number of times, who's excited for Thursday? Three of us. Oh, okay. I'm just going to assume that most of us are. I really love Thanksgiving. I love this Thursday. Not for the football. Sorry, Chris. It is a special day for football and the Detroit Lions. But for me, it's family. I just love this Thursday for family. And it is a... Um, we shared our... our things we look forward to um, around the council meeting. And I said, I love Thanksgiving because it's the one day a year that our our family gets to spend um, the day with both of our sides of the family. At my mom's house, the whole family will be there, and so we'll get to be there in the morning. And then later in the afternoon, we'll go to Stacy's family's house where her mom hosts the whole family. So literally, our kids, Stacy and I, we get to see both sides of the family, the whole family. And it is actually a joy for most, I mean, all of them to see them all. 
No crazy expectations for Thanksgiving. No super big things. I don't have to prepare the meal yet in life. We just go and be together. And I think that scene is pretty much replicated across, the, across our country. A lot of us probably had those sorts of experiences for, uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, will you, most of you, be doing something like that for Thanksgiving on Thursday? It's beautiful. It's amazing. I think Thanksgiving in many ways is a kingdom come sort of moment. God shows up there in the midst of that. It's maybe what, look, what it looks like when Christ is king. People together loving each other. However, after Thursday comes Friday. Black Friday. Our culture shifts from this radical peacefulness and being together and being thankful for everything that we have into a greed that seems to increase exponentially by year. And it even starts before Friday, before families have finished eating our pumpkin pies or in our case, an amazing Dutch apple pie, the world calls moms, dads, sons and daughters, children, back to the malls, back to the stores to begin the shopping. Every year, it seems like these stores begin opening a little bit earlier, though maybe that trend is reversing this year. As we were talking about, REI sent out an email saying that on Friday, they were not opening and encouraging everyone to go outside and play. I must admit, the culture of shopping and buying and greed appalls me. I think it does this for all of us, and yet we get drawn into it anyway. I mean, so nursing homes, hospitals, police stations, I understand those workers on Thanksgiving. I mean, those people are heroes. We have a couple in our family that are nurses and go to do work sometimes on the holidays, on Thanksgiving. But there is no reason in this kingdom why anyone needs to go to do any work at any store on Thanksgiving. We don't need to shop. We don't need to support a culture that sends single moms or children from their families at five or, five or six o'clock on Thanksgiving night. We don't need to support a system that teaches our teenagers that their place is working their part-time jobs at Dick's or Best Buy on Thanksgiving night rather than being with families. We talk about how important families are, and yet we send our young people to go work on the family night. You want to know why families have a hard time in our culture? Maybe that's it. And then Friday, by the time lunchtime on Friday rolls around, we've already started getting the news stories about how some poor older gentleman or young mom or young child was trampled over in the, like, wanting to get the paper reams that were practically free at Staples or something like that. The TVs that were drastically reduced as someone got run over. It's ironic, isn't it? The ones Jesus cares for the most in the Gospels, the older folks, the younger folks, the most vulnerable, they're the ones that kind of get taken advantage of on Black Friday. Who or what is king? It isn't all about Black Friday. Our violation of the first commandment, a refresher to the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no others. It's run rampant in our world. It's almost a daily um, breaking of the commandments. We show up on Sundays here, every Sunday, claiming that Jesus is our Lord. And yet our behavior and our lifestyles, the other six days or perhaps 15 minutes after church is over, maybe implies a different God rules our lives. We're Christians on Sunday mornings and then other things the rest of the days. We as Christians, we have this special gift of taking sacred faith holidays like Thanksgiving, like Christmas and Easter, and turning them into days of radical consumerism or just not focusing on the real point and thinking it's about Santa Claus or Easter bunnies or cornucopias. Irony is part of the story of this day. Again, the Antonia Fortress, Pilate, Jesus, two people who cannot wrap their minds around each other. Two people who just don't get it and what the other is saying. Beautifully, on this Christ the King Sunday, the gospel focuses on the beginning of the crucifixion story with these two guys. And we get this moment between Jesus and the culture. Jesus 
and the power. Jesus, Rome. And they don't recognize each other. Or at least, Rome doesn't recognize Jesus. Are you a king? You say that you're a king. Are you a king? And Jesus just answers back in his kingdom language that goes right over Pilate's head. Some things haven't changed in 2,000 years. Our world still doesn't get Jesus, still struggles to understand what Jesus is about. Rome doesn't recognize the power of Jesus, and nor do we now. Because God's kingdom isn't what we expect. It isn't what's on the commercials. It isn't what those around us expect or raise up as the expectation or the model. Jesus lives his life of radical love and care for the other over himself. He's always pouring himself out for the other, being thankful for what he has and offering thankfulness all the time, offering up himself as sacrifice, teaching, discipling, modeling. Beautifully, in a culture of the first century that was just as puzzled and confused by Jesus as we are today. Jesus is king, though. I should be thankful and satisfied with all that I have. Because that's what it looks like when Jesus is king. And yet it is hard to wrap my head around sometimes. So I invite you, myself too, I invite all of us on this last Sunday of the church year to reevaluate the worlds we walk through. We claim Christ is king today. We all do. We do it together. Christ is king. And so now is our opportunity to live it out this week. What better week to live out Christ is King. Amen.